My name is Robbie and today I'm going to tell you about my six figure investment portfolio. I've seen somewhere online that if you act really excitable and try and be as in your face as possible at the very beginning of a video the engagement's better, like a Mr Beast video. I don't think it's for me, not my style. I think we'll just stick to the videos being normal. What's happening folks, my name is Robbie and we are now into April and you know what that means? Portfolio update. So if you've followed me for a while you'll know that every quarter I post a video on my channel breaking down my full investment portfolio. That's index funds, individual stocks, cryptocurrencies, forex and I've also added a new category as well. You'll see that later in the video. And before I begin I just want to put in the usual caveat, this video is for informational purposes, educational purposes. I don't want anyone thinking I'm trying to brag or flex on people. This is just a breakdown of what I've invested my money in and some points on why I've bought this or why I've sold that. I love seeing other people's portfolio updates and what things they're investing in. I find it interesting seeing how other people structure their portfolios and why they may be investing in certain companies or not investing in others. And it's also nice watching other people's portfolios grow over time. That's why I upload these videos each quarter. Ideally, the portfolio is always going to be bigger than the previous quarter. So I hope you can maybe take something from this video, be it a bit of information, some entertainment or both. And the last point before I get started, I am aware my voice sounds a little bit croaky. I think I look quite tired as well. This morning was my first day out of isolation, so I've been stuck at home feeling unwell for the past week. But this morning, I was allowed to leave the house. Where did I go? Where do you think? So please excuse my potential croaky voice, the fact I look a bit tired. I don't feel 100% yet, I'd probably say I'm about 85%. Anyway, I'm going to get straight into it and discuss where the portfolio was last quarter in January. So, last quarter, the total portfolio value was £83,780.90 and it broke down to £39,238.88 in index funds, £9,234.43 in individual stocks and £35,307.59 in cryptocurrency. So that's our starting point from last quarter. Can we improve in it this quarter? Only one way to find out. So as always, I'm going to start with index funds. Index funds take up around half of my portfolio. No newcomers in this section and no index funds left the portfolio this quarter either. The biggest percentage increase was the FTSE 250 with an increase of 298.3% and the lowest was still a healthy profit of 15.72% in the S&P 500. So taking it from the top, we have the S&P 500 at £42,776.09. This is my biggest holding in the portfolio. This increased by £5,809.50, which as I've mentioned is a 15.72% increase since last quarter. Next up is the Emerging Markets Index Fund. This increased by 44.4%. This increased by 44.4% or £640.93 to £2,084.43. Following on from that is the Germany All Cap Fund. This is sitting at £927.74. This increased by £453.24, which is a 95.52% increase. And the smallest holding in the index fund category is the FTSE 250. As I mentioned before, this increased by 298% to £717.53. I also have £33.68 in cash in my Vanguard account. I will use this to invest in index funds at some point so I'll just include that in the index fund section. Once it's in the Vanguard account in my Stocks and Shares ISA, it's not coming back out, so I'm just going to include it. So this brings the index fund total from £39,238.88 in January to £46,539.47. That's an 18.61% increase of £7,300.59. Next up on the list is individual stocks, this is typically the category that most people find interesting. There has been a few movements in this category. Tesla is gone. I was of the opinion that Tesla was massively overpriced and I didn't want to have my money tied up in it if it was to come plummeting down, which I think may happen at some point. So I sold. I also finished the coin flip versus the stock market experiment. If you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description. But this meant I sold the following shares. Spirax Sarco, Experian, Halma PLC, National Grid, JD Sports, Hikma Pharmaceuticals, Intertech Group, Rolls Royce and Rio Tinto. There are, however, eight newcomers in this category as well. Four big hitters in the form of Facebook, Netflix, Google and Amazon. I also added four smaller holdings within the eToro account. This is now a small account that I'm just going to use as a little 
dividend portfolio. So this has Shell, BP, Imperial Brands, Persimmon and Everaz. My thought process here is I plan to hold all of these stocks long term and every time they pay a dividend, I'm just going to reinvest that straight back into the company. They aren't particularly big holdings, but hopefully over the long term, the account will grow pretty nicely. The best performer in this category was my free trade account. This increased by 58.19% this quarter, but that's pretty much all down to the free shares I've received through referring people to free trade. Speaking of which, I'll include a link to free trade in the description. If you sign up through my link, you'll get a free share and I'll get a free share. So it's a win-win. The worst performer in the category was Argo Blockchain, which was down 25.74%, but that was only a loss of £15.60, so not the end of the world. So in no particular order, here are the list of individual stocks that I own. And just to mention again, when I mention if the stock is up or down, this is if the total is up or down on the previous quarterly portfolio update. For example, if I put an extra £100 into Starbucks, the stock might not have even went up in the past quarter, but my holding has because I've put an extra £100 in. So if you hear big numbers of this jumped by 25% when actually it didn't, it's because I've maybe deposited more money into that holding as well. But I will obviously include the little screenshots like this one, so you know that I'm telling the truth and what my holdings are. I wouldn't have any reason to lie about it anyway because why would I go out my way to make this video to just lie, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, I'm going to bang through these pretty quickly because I don't want to bore you with 25 minutes of me just going through every individual stock. So Warehouse Riot, down 0.58% to £671.10. Berkshire Hathaway, up 21.8% to £542.36. Apple, up 1.66% to £819.20. IAG, up 1.79% to £280.12. Starbucks, down 19.29% to £348.55. Starbucks was a bad example of a company I might have put money into because I didn't and they've went down nearly 20%. Argo Blockchain down 25.74% to £45. I know that one's a really low amount. I'm just going to let it sit there in the account and then probably just sell it if it gets to break even again. Procter & Gamble down 2.39% to £355.04. Scottish Mortgage Trust down 20.8% to £235.40. Corsair up 4.47% to £135.60. AT&T down 1.29% to £237.73 Tilray up 18.09% to £51.70 Again, another small one that I probably will sell if it breaks even And the newcomers in the Hargreaves account Facebook sitting at £704.86 Netflix sitting at £903.78 Google sitting at £2,187.59 and Amazon sitting at £2,597.53. Now on to the eToro holdings. BP is the only company that I kept a hold of after the coin flip versus the stock market challenge. That is currently up 22.13% to £162. Shell is next, sitting at £173.55. Imperial Brands sitting at £160.97. Persimmon sitting at £146.54 and Evraz, which is an interesting one. So Evraz is a company that yielded pretty high dividend returns. It's the only reason I added it to this little dividend portfolio. I didn't know a whole lot about the company. I've done a quick bit of Googling just to find out roughly what they do, but for the sake of £150 or whatever it was, I thought, high dividend, I'm going to take a punt on it. Now this was foolish. Evraz is a Russian company, which at the time I didn't actually realise because it was listed in the FTSE 100, but I also didn't really care. Then a week after I bought Evraz, Russia invaded Ukraine. The company dive-bombed around 70%, then the Russian stock market closed. Evraz is listed on the London Stock Exchange, I believe, but it hasn't moved in a month, so it must be on the receiving end of sanctions or something else to that effect. Whatever the case may be, I'm currently holding on to £55.39 of Evraz. Now, without getting too political, in the grand scheme of things, do I care about the £80 or whatever that I've lost? No, there are more important things going on in the world, particularly involving Russian and Ukrainian people. So I'm not going to sit here and cry about it. I just thought it was a funny story because of the terrible timing of me investing in that company. If it becomes tradable again, I'll probably sell it. Anyway, back to the stocks. 
My free trade account is up 58.19% to £172.97. This is basically where I hold my free shares from free trade, which they have clamped down on people sharing on social media, I believe. I also have my Forex trading account that is currently down 7.91% from last quarter to £1,262.94. Now there is also £419.82 in cash between eToro and Hargreaves Lansdowne. Same as with the index funds, I'm just going to include that number in the stocks and shares category because this money is going to get invested at some point, I just haven't decided what I'm going to invest it into yet. And this leaves only one more thing in the stocks and shares category. And this is the new section that I mentioned at the start of this video. I've invested in a startup. So I've never invested in a startup before. This is my first venture into trying it. And because of this, I'm not 100% sure what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not. I'm pretty sure it would be fine. I don't think I'd be breaking any rules. But I don't want to mention anything just yet in case I say something that I shouldn't. So I'm just going to leave all the details out for now. And then if I'm allowed to mention it, I'll make a full video explaining how I found the company, what I liked about it, why I wanted to invest in it, what I hope to see in the future from it. But what I can say is I invested £3,001.24 into the company. So taking all of that into account, that brings the stocks and shares category to £15,670.98. That's a 69.7% increase over last quarter. And that equates to £6,436.55. Now we're on to the third and final category, the most volatile category of them all, cryptocurrency. So the same as last quarter, there has not been any incoming crypto holdings or outgoing crypto holdings. They're all the same as last quarter, so I'll just take it from the top with the big one, Bitcoin. So over my Binance, BlockFi and Coinbase accounts, my Bitcoin holdings currently sit at £27,945. And 81 pence. This is an 11.73% increase of £2,934.78 from last quarter. Next up is Ethereum, which is actually down from last quarter, sitting at £4,992.72. Ethereum is down 6.31%. Luna is next on the list, sitting at £3,430.40. It has increased by £772.78. This equates to a 29.08% increase. Ripple, up 2.64% to £303.35. Cardano is down 13.41%, sitting at £170.49. Solana, down 35.92% to £425.20. Shiba Inu, still don't know why I bought this down 20.17% to £136.31 and last but not least, potentially the worst investment I have ever made in my life, Floki Inu, sitting at £446.74. This is a 54.57% drop since last quarter. Overall, it's around a 75% drop since I bought it. Why did I do that? Why? Either way, this brings the total crypto holdings to £37,851.02. This is a 7.2% increase of £2,543.43. So that is my whole investment portfolio, top to bottom. Where does it sit in comparison to last quarter? Well, last quarter, the total portfolio sat at £83,780.90. And now it sits at, wait for it. Well, we're waiting. £100,061.47. Six figures. I broke the six figure barrier. It maybe doesn't look like it because as I mentioned before, I have been unwell for the past week. I'm quite tired. It's about nine o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. But I am very excited that I've broke the six figure barrier. I'm only £61 above the six figure barrier. So ideally, next quarter, I haven't dropped back down below it. I want this 100,000 to be my new baseline. Next stop, 250K, that'd be nice. So the portfolio overall increased by 19.43%, which equates to 16,000. What on earth? My battery died on my camera. So now we're in iPhone mode. That's why it's shaky because I don't have it propped up on anything. So the portfolio increased by 19.43%, which equates to 16,280 pounds and 57 pence. Now remember this also includes my contributions. For example, I've invested in Netflix, 
Facebook, Amazon and Google, which were all big investments relative to the size of the portfolio, particularly the stocks and shares category. But overall, the size of the portfolio has increased by 19% and broken the six figure barrier. So I'm very happy with these numbers. My target for 2022 was to get my investment portfolio up to 110,000 pounds by the end of 2022. So I'm certainly on track to achieve that. Thank you as always for watching folks. If you enjoyed the breakdown of my portfolio, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can catch the next one and various other videos about investing and finance. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next week. Take it easy. Fucking stupid camera.